It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Muraya Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Dr. Obiajilu Ubo in the building. Uh, how are you doing? It's been a while. I haven't so seen you in a minute. You me. You asked me to go and take yes. some more rest. Yes, we thought you needed it. was back. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I do the work. You did me. I know that you were taking care of uh, Oga at home. Yes, sir. And it was also the holiday. Oga was home. Oh, so I had fantastic. to uh -huh. present. Hey, good, 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 good. Use that uh, feminine energy. Hey, okay. So, take care of him. However, I had a friend over and the family, so we had a full house this ah, weekend. Nice. My sister is around. She's heavy. She'll be delivering soon by like God's grace. Nice. And I'm going to be mm. doing Omugo. So she'll definitely ah. be in my place. Oh, yeah. nice. So the house is full. The kids are there. We just had a good time. We hung out. Oh, nice. Mm. Hung out you can see the joy on her face. Money that is living in your pocket. <laughs> well, so now we're back to the grind. I'm yes. going to go after the show now to ring bell. Well, good to have you back. Okay. I love it. You, you, you look refreshed, though. Yeah. I think the I joy, the, yeah, you rested and the happiness is showing on your face. Yeah, so it's good you. to have you back. Hello, Tokwe. Marco Dige. I'm feeling very good. Yeah, Dr. Matoko Marco Dige, too, now. Ah, ah, imagine, you have, not, you, have not, you have not really pressed your doctor yet. Don't worry, we'll press on you now. <laughs> Dr. Takwe Marco Dige. Uh, How was your weekend? It was, it was, um, it was a very balanced weekend. Mm. So on Saturday, I spent the entire day at Marriott um, teaching and learning. I, I've never thought about, um, I've never thought on personal branding, but this particular real estate event, um, Tade Cash invited me to talk about personal branding and the impact of personal branding on my business. Mm. So I had to dig deeper and start mm. show workings mm. of the fact that having a personal brand made it easy yeah. to thrive in business. People mm. already knew yeah. this person and mm. they felt that we see her, she shows up all the mm. time, she's consistent. Mm. And I had to break down how being consistent in little things like you're posting, you're arranging your post makes mm. an unconscious impact on people's mindset that she it seems she's a serious very minded, yeah. serious minded. person. Mm. And so many of them were like, oh, mm. I didn't think social media could be, could, would be that impactful mm. and all of that. So mm. I, I, I enjoyed having to talk about that area mm. and how it is important. And many people are already giving me feedback that, oh, we now went to set up our um, mm. business page, we are doing all of that. How can you run business and you don't have a business page on oh, social wow, media? Yeah. Like, we don't know Where you. you yes. Visibility is important. Right. You are <coughs> selling land and selling houses. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> That's well done, well done. And then I spent the entire Sunday sleeping. Ah, oh, so that's the balance. Yes, yes that's the very, balance. very balanced. I'm rested and grateful. Amaka fresh. Hi. Are you As doing? Indeed, I'm I'm doing. Doing. You can't be fresh <laughs> on the other. Oh, no. I, every time I see her, I think like, of oh, Amaka <laughs> fresh in my head. Amaka, I, I'm fresh now. <laughs> yeah, I'm fresh. <laughs> How was your weekend? Um, it was busy. Um, yeah, I partied a lot. Actually, I had the opportunity to wear some of my younger brands. Mm -hmm. So it was super amazing, yes. And then also, it was also a work weekend for me. I had contract reviews. I needed to go out this morning. And I knew I was going to be here this morning. Mm -hmm. So I spent the entire, I had to cancel the brunch meeting yesterday. I spent the entire Sunday working. Doing but then, work. it's all good, yes. I'm happy to be here. And it's an amazing week ahead, I hope. Yes. People so have a fifth big memo already. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have a birthday shout out today because it was supposed to be done on Friday. Oh, wow. Somebody yeah. very dear to my heart. I forgot because we're talking about we had Adilabu mm -hmm. and it was a very serious matter. So I had to greet her this morning. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Titi Adebo Ali. She was 75 on Friday. She's my mom's very, very close yeah. friend. She's like, like a mother to me. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, mommy. I love you. She's an amazing woman. You know, when my mom passed on and you know, we're all crying, you know, she came to the house for the first time. And while I was still in that grieving mood, she looked at me. Where are your mom's gold? That was the first question. Mm. Mommy's gold, where is it? She mm. was intentional. Go upstairs. Okay. And get it. Go upstairs, get the suitcase, pack everything, mm. and she put it in the car. <laughs> that was the house. first thing. That's maturity. Put it in the car. Yeah. Wisdom. Everything that is, that is valuable in your mother's wardrobe, pack mm. everything, put it in the car. Now, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I like how after I you know. finished all the drama. <laughs> Hey, so how are you holding on? Mm. And I'm like, this thing's going to be sick. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we're not crying. Things are happening. Oh my God, yeah. I can never forget oh, yeah. that moment. Yeah. She didn't even look at anybody's yeah. face. Went straight to me. Yeah. Oh, your mother's property. Where is it? Oh, wow. Carry. <laughs> well, I love her so much. She's an amazing yeah, woman. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Adebo Ali, God yeah. bless you. So much time on Friday. Happy we birthday. celebrate you, Mr. Adebo Ali. All right, let's go on a short break now. When we come back, look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. EFCC. 
will try bank CEOs over COVID funds and World Bank loans. Inflation records marginal rise at close of Q1. Samwalu tips APC to win Undo poll. LNG supply shell tables claims against Venture Global and NLNG faces arbitration hurdles. Four CNG stations ready in Lagos. Why North Central should retain PDP chair slot by Suswam. Southwest governors take measures against agitators. And Chiba girls 10 years after an editorial. Okay, which story are we starting with? Okay, let me start with the agitators. So the Southwest government uh, yesterday <coughs> took measures to avert the invasion by agitators for secession. And um, they said, apart from beefing up the security in their state secretariats and government houses, they also warned troublemakers to desist from their nefarious activities or risk the consequences. And we know that the governor's decision had, was followed by an abortive attempt by some maxed uniformed men to invade or your state government secretariat, Agodi, in Ibadan. And they tried to hoist the uh, secessionist flag at the weekend. And also last night, the Yoruba Nation agitator, uh, Sunday Adeyemo Igboho, uh, d disassociated himself with them, said the activities of those agitators should, uh, should be investigated and the police should arrest them because he had no hand in it. Afeni Ferret, <coughs> as well, led by Pa Ruben Fasarati, also decried the invasion and they are calling for penalties for the sponsors and perpetrators of the violence. Then across different southwest states, they had something to say. For on those states, government, they said there would be no room for violent agitations and uh, severe punishment awaits anybody that foment trouble under the guise of agitating for a Yoruba nation. If anybody's trying to work against the Nigerian state, they'll be treated as public enemy yeah. and harassed. Other mm -hmm. states as well also spoke of it, but I think that's supposed to be one yeah. of our topics for okay. today. Sure. All right, so CNG stations are pretty excited. So one of the major uh, petrol stations managing director, Nipco, Nipco Gas Limited, Mr. Nagendra Verma, said that there are four stations they compress natural gas that CNG stations are already in Lagos. He was pretty excited about that. Um, said the federal government had started the initiative in promoting gas as an alternative to fuel. Um, he affirmed the company's commitment to supporting the initiative. Uh, he spoke on the company's partnership with NLNG, no, NNPC, to build 35 auto CNG stations in phases. So the completion of these four stations in Lagos uh, would be resume operations between April and May to become the first of its kind in the state, which is now contending with long queues at filling stations. So I'm pretty excited about that. Many cars are yet to convert mm -hmm. to CNG um, mm -hmm. compatible, but eventually, hopefully, as these more stations begin to be um, CNG, uh, have CNG availability, more, more cars will convert, and then we'll see how that will be more efficient than using fuel. I'm pretty excited okay. about that. Okay. So I have the anti-graft agency, EFCC, has intensified its investigation into the culpability of bank chief executive officers in the mismanagement of COVID-19 funds and World Bank loans. Also, under probe is the alleged mismanagement of recovered abacha loot given to the Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development Ministry for disbursement to beneficiaries of the federal government support for the poor program. The agency explained this yesterday in a statement by its spokesman, Dele Oyewale, which clarified this investigation into the ministry. The EFCC also announced yesterday that it had received 32.7 billion naira and $445,000 so far from top <coughs> officials of the ministry under its search light. Whoa. Um, shedding light on the probe of malfeasance in the Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development Ministry. The agency said, at the outset of investigations, past and suspended officials of the humanitarian affairs were invited by the commission. On investigations into the alleged fraud involving them have yielded recovery of $32.7 billion and $445,000 so far. Mm. That's a lot. Discrete investigations by the FCC have opened other fraudulent dealings involving COVID-19 funds. The World Bank loan, a batch of recovered loot released to the ministry by the federal government to execute yeah. its poverty elevation mandate. That's, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's too much money yeah. in looted. Yeah. Mm. I'm hoping that the investigation is yes. yes. I started. Yeah. Yeah. Looting. I started. Looting. Oh, looted. 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 So I want to take the story about <coughs> NLNG. Um, 
the Venture Global NLNG mm. uh, will be facing a few arbitration hurdles. And I'm, I'm wondering what that will pretend for Nigeria, being that they are a major source of um, revenue for us as a country. Mm -hmm. The sh Shell has taken them to court to, in the United States mm -hmm. for breach of contract, said that they didn't supply <laughs> as much gas as agreed. Similarly, the United um, Kingdom, too, has taken them um, to a, a company, United Kingdom, has taken them to court in the United Kingdom for similar breach of contract by NNNG in terms of supply. They said that they are supplying <laughs> other countries, they are supplying other people and they did not comply with the contract they signed with them. They said they so exported over $18 billion through um, in LNG, but they didn't get what they had agreed mm -hmm. on. So my worry is, is it that because, well, you know, we need to get funds. So um, this new inflow of funds, if they indeed go ahead with this arbitration, they go to court, I hope they will not get a lawsuit that would favor the this Shell and the other company against LNG, which is a major financial contributor to the Nigerian economy. Mm. I'm just I'm okay. hoping that we're able to correct it mm. before we're now going to appeal <coughs> on whatever punitive measure um, or financial challenge they put on us. Mm. Okay, the punch. Recapitalization race. Top banks target $3 billion fund in foreign capital markets. Let free Chibok girls reunite with families, community tells government. No five-star treatment for Borbrisky, says NY, uh, NSC officials. Oh. Iran, Israel, Nigeria, and G7 urge ceasefire. World leaders condemn attack. Yoruba Nation secondary security beef up in Southwest government houses. Tariff hike, FG begs workers as electricity union insists on strike. <coughs> Humanitarian ministry, EFCC recovers fresh $445,000 and 3 billion naira. Labor asks federal government to unveil new minimum wage by May 1st. Okay. Do we take labor before we go on a break? Go ahead, yes. Okay. So the organized labor on <coughs> Sunday uh, listed his expectations ahead of the 2024 Workers' Day, and they were calling on the federal government to announce a new minimum wage May 1st. The National Vice President of the Trade Union Congress, Tommy Etim, was the one who spoke with the correspondents, and he described Workers' Day as Christmas Day for workers. And he said there were a lot of expectations, particularly since some of the newly initiated policies of the government had continued to push more Nigerians into poverty. He said the workers in the country were expectant of the new minimum wage especially. And he said, I quote, the Workers' Day is a type of Christmas Day to Nigerian workers and there are a lot of expectations. The welfare of workers is paramount and should be taken into consideration. It's also expected that lots of incentives will be rolled out to cushion the effects of the policies initiated by the government, uh, which have continued to limit the purchasing power of workers in Nigeria as a whole. So he says the Purchasing power is presently very weak in the country, and they're expecting the minimum wage to help them cushion that effect. They also talked about the CNG buses that they are hoping will be launched very soon. Mm. Okay, let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. I'll take the story. So the um, story on Bob Brisky. So the controversial cross-dresser Idris Okune, a.k.a. Bob Brisky, was handed a six-month prison sentence over Naira abuse. Currently shares the same cell with male inmates, say, um, in the Ikoyi Custodial Center. According to Justice Abimbola Ogoro of Federal High Court, who has sentenced him um, on Friday, April 12th, said that the judgment will be a deterrent to others who are found abusing and mutilating the Naira. So the, um, the custodial center, after judgment, was said to have been treated equally with other inmates. They didn't give him any preferential treatment. According to the warder, who said he was not authorized to speak, said that the cross was not given any five-star treatment at the facility and was examined at the point of admission. According to one of the officials, the outcome of the examination revealed that the convict had no realignment of gender or genital organs. Mm -hmm. um, Bobrisky made a public declaration that he was male and 
court proceedings are public records. Every inmate brought into a facility during admission is examined. He was equally examined and no realignment of gender uh, and um, or genital organ was discovered. Interesting. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But we saw... So it all make believe, I believe. I don't know. We're just, I'm we just saying, back. based on they the order. They said they checked the exam. You yeah, have the exam. Might the front might be intact. Mm -hmm. But the, there was something in the wow. back. And nothing realigned. Okay. Wow. Okay, okay. now. <laughs> so um, let's take the, um, the tariff hike. The federal government has appealed to members of the National Union of Electricity Employees not to down tools over the recent electricity tariff hike. Um, in, the, in their earlier reaction, the union had warned the government to reverse the tariff hike and um, rescind its decision on the removal of subsidy on the tariff, especially payable by Band A customers. If the government fails to address the crippling cost of electricity, NUEE will not hesitate to take strong action, including the swift withdrawal of our members expected to be used by discos to impose a tariff hike on the good people to protect the livelihood of our members. Because you cannot give what you do not have. Adeye said that you cannot that the supply of 20 hours of electricity is not feasible. <laughs> At least that is not the truth. <clears throat> With the current infrastructure, mm. we just want the citizen to know that this thing is not possible. It is not feasible. You cannot give what you don't have. When we don't have energy to give the, to the people, and you ask our people to go out and collect such money from them, mm. ah, then they might um, beat up our people and that it is very dangerous for their people, so that if the government does not re rescind its decision to remove the, um, the subsidy on the tariffs for Band A customers, that they will withdraw their customers because people are going to beat them up. Because okay. you're collecting money for what you did not, for services you did not render. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to take the NDLEA story inside the papers. NDLEA giving us a report of what they've done. Specifically yesterday, um, the spokesperson for NDLA, Mr. Femi Bafba Femi, said that in a coordinated operation, they were able to arrest three people, including an eight-month pregnant woman, Favor Peter. <coughs> then they also arrested Esther Uduku, that's 27, and Ochubu Michael, 39. And this was done in series of coordinated. They, in, the, in that arrest, they found 3.2 million naira counterfeit notes, mm. as well as a lot of other illicit drugs. This was within Jabi um, in Abuja, Lokoja in Kogi State, and it was they, they caught them in those two different locations. They also um, mentioned that they arrested someone in Calabar Cross River, a 40-year-old widow who is who was producing and selling a new deadly psychoactive <laughs> substance known as combined from our house. Mm. Found someone that was selling about 98 kilograms of cannabis. They will always find cannabis. Cannabis seems to be like a normal thing. But this other psychoactive substance, I think that I believe that Nigerians should watch out for yeah, because mm, really we don't know what they are combining mm -hmm. together yeah. and the health impact is huge. So thumbs up to NDLA for the good work they are doing and we should also caution ourselves against these things. All right, Daily Sun, very quickly. PDP chair, WK Camp pushes for Damagum against Suswam and Agbo. Ohaneze renews push for additional states. Published loan agreements by Obasanjo, Yardua, Jonathan Buhari, Serap tells Tinumbu. Safe Schools Initiative, FG to engage <coughs> hunters, vigilantes, intelligence gathering. Forex power crisis, 40% of manufacturing plants on verge of collapse. Humanitarian Ministry, EFCC investigating banks, Abacha loot and COVID-19, on says commission. Electricity tariff hike and Nigerians still pay for darkness. Coastal road, no compensation for Shanti's owners, says Omahi. Okay, which story? We can take the safe school. So the federal government has stepped up plans to actively engage hunters and vigilantes on intelligence gathering to curb attacks on schools across the country. The National Coordinator of Financing Safe Schools Initiative, Mrs. Halima Ilia, was the one who gave the indication in Abuja yesterday. And he said aggressive community engagement and sensitization of students and parents and also teachers will kick off any moment from now. As a component of the plan for states with local vigilantes, they will be training the local vigilantes. And for those states who do not have local vigilantes, they will train their youths instead. And they said that they will be asking the youths to volunteer in their different communities so that they can get a form of training. They cannot achieve anything without the youth. So uh, he, he, she says, and I quote, we'll bring them to the security architecture for them to defend and protect their communities in the areas of intelligence gathering, <coughs> prevention, and detection of uh, deterrence capabilities. 
and he says there were also plans to use the National Orientation Agency, NOA, uh, because of the presence in their different local communities. They will be reaching out to the grassroots to help people even understand what it means to protect themselves. They will be developing training manuals that could be converted to local dialects for the different um, you know, uh, local governments for efficient communication so that everybody has an understanding of what is expected for them, how they will collaborate with the youth, the vigilantes and the government. I think it's a good one. Okay. Let's just mm -hmm. see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to take um, that 40 percent the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria said that about 40% of manufacturers, local producers, are at, at, at the risk of shutting down their business based on the increase in tariff hike. They also said that the, a lot of the current policies being put in place to help the economy hasn't trickled down and hasn't in any way supported the manufacturers within Nigeria. Said that there is high interest rate on loan, hyperinflation, astronomical energy cost. Um, and it, all of this together generating a very toxic <coughs> environment mm. for operations for local businesses. In this telephone conversation, Frank Oyebu, who is the former chairman of Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, also said that the manufacturers, many manufacturers, local producers that are bringing a bit of forex into the country are already considering shutting down their businesses because they cannot sustain the cost of running those businesses. They said the, they are using local imputes, suppliers are increasing their prices, they are unable to, and even though the dollar naira has appreciated, they are unable to drop price because they brought in their goods already until they have sold out this product. That the government is hoping the government would step in and think about a policy that would favor manufacturers within Nigeria. And I totally agree that the policy seems to be working. But yeah, we but also this need is to, temporary. I, I can't, can't do another policy to sort a temporary situation no, because once things stabilize, so I can't now do a policy just because I'm doing intervention. For, so them. that we don't, they don't shut down their businesses. Because mm -hmm. when they shut down their businesses, people will lose their jobs. Okay, let's take another story. Mm -hmm. so okay, so let's ahead. take the Oneze Ndibo story. Oneze Ndibo worldwide has rekindled the push for the creation of additional states for the <coughs> Southeast. This is as Igbo Lawyers Association has pledged to support the Apex, um, Apex Igbo Social Cultural and Political Organization in its step up campaign for a fair share for the zone in the state structure. The zone has been agitating for an additional state and had actually made presentations to the government to use this legal instrument, especially with the 1999 Constitution Review, to do so, to be at par with the other five zones in the Federation, most of which have six and one that has seven. But the request has not been heeded by the authorities. The President General of the Ohane Zendibu, um, Emmanuel Iwanyawu, also stated that Yibo were not happy with the skilled nature of the 1999 constitution. Hence, Ohaneze still stood by its um, Oka declaration on constitution review after a special summit in 2018. So regardless of everything that the federal government is trying to push against this, the Ohaneze and Ibu, they are really pushing towards, you know, because they don't understand why allocations should be done to local governments, that they should, you know, create more states and it should be alloc uh, allocated to the states. Okay, final story this morning. So David Umahi, the Minister of Works, has said that um, the 700 meter Lagos Calabar Coastal Road project would not compensate, they will not compensate those that have shanties and those people that had those uh, caravan owners along that line. So many, those who have permanent structures will be compensated, but those of them that have those um, caravan owners, the shanties, the kiosks, they're yeah. not going to compensate those ones. Wow. And they're saying that the, the, um, the project should be completed in eight years and there's a revenue generating project because they're going to have, it's going to oh. attract tourist attraction and so it attracts tourists, um, commerce, water transportation, factories, hotels, real estate development along that line and they're expecting that it will cost about 15 trillion naira and will be completed before the eight years. So they're going to be, it's also going to be told so hopefully that they're going to get revenue from that bridge but it's an all important bridge that must be carried out, but unfortunately, only those with permanent structures will be compensated. We have to run quickly. I know there was a point story, the story about yeah. um, okay, so yes, the, so, yeah, our neighbors yes. repeatedly defiled me, physically and challenged. It, it, it's, it's so sad, you know. Um, one second, let me pull that up because you said the last story, so I just don't, <laughs> I just saw what you're yeah. gonna do. So the that. point, yes, yeah, so the point. Okay, so a 14 year old girl. Um, notwithstanding her physical, uh, physical disabilities, a 14-year-old girl named Withheld has revealed that she was turned into a sexual object 
by three of her neighbors, mm. you know, Shobo um, Ogu State. <coughs> whenever her mom steps out in the morning, early hours of the morning, to sell pap, she explained that um, out of three of the men, one, one person started following her into the bathroom whenever she wants to, sh to take her shower. Mm. And well, if she wants to scream, the person will put his hand over, over her mouth and then molest her. She, when she reported to her mother, her mother found out and for the man begged, asked for forgiveness, and the mother forgave the man. Wow. Right? So after, shortly after that, a second neighbor started, came. yes, came, and a banker, this person is actually a banker, hey. and now started molesting her, that when the mom, when the mom goes out in the morning, the guy will sneak into, the, into her bedroom around 6.30 in the morning and start molesting her. Oh. And as this was going on, she reported to her neighbor, a lady, a, a married woman in the compound, and as she reported to her neighbor, the neighbor, instead of um, creating an, raising an alarm, told her, confided in her husband. Then her husband now went and started... So they've and seen followed. her as... They've seen her as in her job, physically uh, 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 challenged girl. Then they now awesome. started molesting, the husband now started molesting the girl. So their neighbors now, people now found out. So they reported to the police, police now to get... So find out, so they are... They've arranged them in front of um, the magistrate. The three court. of them. The three of them. No, one of the, the, the banker ran away. We ran, ran away from. Fortunately, we have to wrap so, up. That's all we yeah. can take. Really <gasps> sad story. Really, really sad. sad story. Imagine the mother forgive. Yeah. Mm, nah, it's forgiveness. That is man. all we can take we on judge. front page review. When we come back, move on to our next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Over the weekend, security officers arrested 16 gunmen suspected to be members of a group identified as Odua Nation Agitators for invading the state secretariat at Agodi Badon, or your state. According to the news agency of Nigeria, NAN, the gunmen, who were more than 10, blocked the secretariat total garden road to make way for other members of the group to force their way into the secretariat complex. The gunmen, who were said to be dressed in military camouflage, were subdued with the arrival of security personnel. Joining us on the show is a special advisor to the governor of Oyo State on security matters, um, is retired Commissioner of Police, Fatai Owusheni. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to you. Yeah, yes. good morning. So over the weekend, many Nigerians woke up to this news. It was quite disheartening. And one of the very first questions that come to mind is that didn't police have some kind of intelligence that this was going to happen in the first place? Uh, the answer to you is that what has happened has happened. Um, intelligence... Um, may not be 100% sometimes, but uh, while they commenced their movement, there was um, a kind of information that was gotten. That from... So uh, there was an information that was gotten that some people uh, in their numbers were trying to come out and that made the uh, police intelligence uh, people to be on their trail. And that, of course, explained why the, um, the dislodgement was uh, immediate. All right. So we're told that they came in and they blocked the secretariats. From the investigations of some of them that have been arrested, what exactly did they say was what they were looking for? in blocking that secretariat? They wanted to start... Your report... Okay, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. The report that they blocked the secretariat is completely false. It is the security operatives that, um, you know, cordoned off the area 
because the security operatives they didn't want people to get into crossfire. It wasn't the um, experience that blocked the secretariat. And of course, from all what you must have uh, seen, um, you know, gone viral on the social media, they have claimed to say that there was a proclamation that a Yoruba nation has been excised from the Federal Republic of Nigeria. They come to take the leadership um, from Ibadan. That is their claim. And like um, I've explained from other interactions, if you listen to them, you'll find out that uh, they are not really coherent. Um, and that is why I will continue to say that, that they have been described as people that are probably on some cheap uh, drug uh, materials um, who have been hoodwinked. I've likened them to people that follow movements like that incident, Guyana tragedy, many years ago in the United States. They are like people that followed the Jesu Yibo thing that have been hoodwinked, hypnotized into believing that so uh, they are fighting for uh, salvation. Um, and that suspicion has been confirmed from the results we are getting from the interrogations that have been carried out. Okay, so um, we also learned that um, they removed the um, Nigerian flag and replaced it with the Odua nation flag. What, 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 what does that connote? They, they, that was their aim to pose the flag and of course, sometimes you require evidence when you want to prosecute. Because what they've done, like a prison, that's a treasonable felony. And of course, when you don't get enough evidence, it is not enough for them to say proclamation. Um, when they were doing that, what they were doing, hosting the flag and they were captured, that is also an evidential material. And of course, they were immediately and swiftly um, dislodged. So um, from, from the conversation, it showed that these were not people with, um, they were not in, they are in a sane state. If you are, if you're going to prosecute them, I would feel like we're catching the, how about, how do we go about where they got the information from? And how do we try people that, they were acting under the influence. Would that impact in any way on how they will get tried? Um, I didn't hear the first part of um, your question because there are so many voices at the background. Since I said the studio is still playing the video of some viral um, oh. uh, video, oh, but if I, if, I, if I capture anything at all, you are saying now, do we assure the people that uh, they have been Lodged or what? No, I said because we know that they acted under the um, under the influence. You know, like they obviously were not in their right state of mind. That are we sure uh, that I'm, I'm looking at it as an individual, uh, as a as a concerned citizen that these are not the people we should be dealing with. Yes, we arrest them, but we need to go after their source, where they get the information from, who is Sponsor. who is influencing them, who is sponsoring them, and who even gave them the drugs and told them where to go to, that kind of thing. For me, those are the people we should go after, not these people. And how would they be tried since they can say, we did not know, somebody drugged us and just told us what to do and we went ahead and did it. Okay, so talking professionally now, uh, why did I like them to people on cheap drugs? You must have seen those videos going all out from the way they were talking. Even the madam that seems to have released to say that a proclamation has been made. Um, you will find out that the person is talking like someone that requires um, examination. Even the other guy that said that Bumiji or something like that, you'll find out that they are mixing a whole lot of things together. And when people are under the influence and their the movement, even if you ask them to go and drink acid and kill themselves, that they will receive salvation, they will do it. That is why you also have suicide bombers. But we are not just, that is the um, one aspect of the analysis. 
So we are not sitting down to just conclude that. Because when you have such movement, or have a connection, they have people financing them, they are somehow well organized. Of course, the security apparatus has been on that since Saturday to get to the root, to see who are their backers. Even some of the viral videos that are being released, um, the security um, apparatus, uh, the, the, the team is working all together to go all out to see where is this coming from. A whole lot of work has been done. Things have been done uh, between Saturday night and now. Um, and when you do such a thing, in situation like this, you only release information they need to know basically. But as to get it to the root, to the source, a um, lot of work um, is going on with respect to that by the combined security system, by the intelligence operators, not just only in the state, um, up to the federal level. Sir, so there are a few things that are in my head because I know that um, these, there is a Yoruba nation agitation. There is a, there's a group that called themselves and is recognized. Sunday who has come out to say he dissociated himself. And I think the other group, there's another head that has also said that they have, they have no um, connection or link with these people. So my question is, how were they able to access the secretariat in the first place? Because that's also a security breach. That's a state, state of power. So for me, that in itself is a major concern as a citizen. How can a, a group that maybe because they're Yoruba nation, I don't know, maybe because of the, the name, get them some kind of access, but how were they so easy to enter the state secretariat? The, the, the reality you have to face even as media people, is that everyone will tell you that they have freedom of movement. We are talking of a country where you have proliferation of uniform, where you have proliferation of so many groups, either hunters group or whatever, under the guise of even private security guards. And you see everybody wearing one form or uniform or the other. And when they come out, they come out at like people that are doing um, a peaceful meeting and all those things. So you cannot rule out a situation where you see people <laughs> just like having actually be coming out in um, all sort of um, um, uniforms. And they will say, oh, they've come for a meeting. The Secretariat, Ibadan, they have an aspect of it where they call the House of Chiefs, where people hold meetings. And sometimes the security people have to be careful. Sometimes you challenge some group like that. And they will tell you that, oh, we are a group that have come for meeting or something like that. It is um, under that kind of a guise because on that particular day, there was a ceremony um, going to take place at the House of Chiefs. And some people come like bouncers. Bouncers wear different kind of uniform too now. Yes, we have sit down to, you know, um, do an appraisal of the whole thing. Where did we fail? And because they, a, a group was noticed coming out of a place they call Olumi, Ibadan. So the intelligence people in um, civil dread had followed them. That was why you see that the dislodgement was fast, it was quick, um, and that made it easy because they've been on their trail to say, oh, is this a peaceful? Uh, movement or whatever. And it's a thin line between when you confront um, movements that they will say, oh, there are peaceful people um, going about. Boy Scout, Boys Brigade can say they are on a march pass and whatever. All so right. you need to distill the information you are getting before you can say, oh, let us uh, respond. Right. Or yeah. as to get into the root, the security people are. Uh, um, you know, um, on top of what they are doing. Okay, sir. So the people making the proclamation, some persons have said they actually do not live in Nigeria. Can you confirm that to us? I won't be able to confirm that. You can only insinuate. But the security people that are working on it are also doing that. This is not new to everyone. You have so many people outside this country that come out to say whatever. Is it Ewa or the fellow that is somewhere out there? that is asking people to sit at home in the Southeast. You have so many of them out there. 
and they are, you know, under the guise that the United Nations um, have a provision that gives room to um, self-determination and all those things. So people come out. It's a thin line between saying you are breaching fundamental rights of uh, people and then, um, of course, doing security work. I have a caller so, for you. But the sort of work is being done with regards to get the source from which that woman was making a broadcast, including the guy that also came up talking a whole lot of things like someone that um, is probably that probably needs a, a, a psychiatric examination. Let me take this call from Isaac. He's calling from Otter. Good morning, Mr. Isaac. You're live. Good morning, Ma. Uh, good morning, uh, listeners. Good morning, uh, the uh, commissioner. Good morning, everyone in the studio. Yes, my question is uh, very simple and straightforward. Uh, Mr. Awosheni talked about... Yes, uh, good, Mr. Awosheni talked about the fact that uh, intelligence cannot be 100 percent of times. So I want to ask, now, in a situation where... In a situation where, I mean, uh, we have a life-threatening situation, I mean, like what happened the last time? I mean, they had their way into the place. He said, he said, according to him, he said the uh, the thing was um, twatted or something. But now, what happens when you know lives are involved? Probably while on their way, they already gone down someone or they already attacked someone before. I mean, the I mean, the security operatives could come in. So, if you expatiate on the fact that intelligence cannot be hundred percent of times, why can does it mean that our intelligence is not, I mean, grounded enough to combat such situation so that it will not endanger life? Right, thank you, Isaac. Thank you. Um, did you get that, uh, Commissioner CB? If I, if I get it clearly, it's trying to question um, the integrity and uh, how, how strong is our intelligence. Is that what he was asking me? Because somebody could have died. Yes, he mentioned that. Yes. So if you're talking of intelligence, don't let us deceive ourselves. Because this thing happened in Ibadan um, doesn't mean it is now that we'll be pretending that uh, one globally, no intelligence system is 100%. Even the, the country of the world that have the best of technology, they used to be breaches. That is why they would tell you that someone at scale defense of the White House or something like that. So you cannot have 100% um, system and of course with um, security. So talk less of here that you have all sort of uh, things put together. Security consciousness is the lowest in this country. And of course, when you talk of human, human intelligence, which is very, very vital, in intelligence um, um, tools. Um, if you have all the technology, you must also make sure that human intelligence is given um, a consideration. What is human intelligence? If you see something, say something. It is a country where because of the Nigeria that has happened to everyone, what people are after is, I want to go out to go and help my living. Even when you tell them to say, um, beside your house, do you know who your neighbor is? They don't bloody care. As Commissioner of Police in Lagos State, I challenged the elite in Ikoyi that your housemate, your cook that you have given your boys quarters, do you go there in the night to know whether he or she has brought in people? And some people went to check and they found out that a oh, housemate, a domestic staff that they've given a one room at the boys quarters has subletted that boys quarter out to another five person. So we, we're talking of the country where we need to improve on our engagement with the people as to security consciousness to say, if you say something, please say something. Some people will say mistrust. Mm -hmm. And you're also talking of a country where every big man going to a social party is carrying all sorts of people wearing all sorts of uniform. It is... What is happening that we see every day? Don't let us pretend. So it requires that we should rejig our um, ways of doing things to check all sort of proliferation, proliferation yeah. of uniform, proliferation of weapon. It starts from an Olode 
guarding a house, carrying a ding gun, from carrying a single barrel. There are some of the so-called militia leaders that you know in this country that when they move, they have all sort of retinue or people following them, blocking your cars. So many big men do that. It is something that the government needs to fight and the people must put hands together with government to fight that. All right. All right, we need to wrap up with you, but I have to ask you very quickly, was it the army or was it the police that apprehended these people? Because we saw a press release from the Nigerian army and then we also seen policemen in uniform apprehending the suspects. So who did it? Who, who are we? Who's taking credit for this? It's a security operation. Who made her arrest doesn't matter. All the arrests made um, uh, will be handed over to the police. The police have the 20 people that is on the figure. The ones, because we have what we call an operation boss, which is a joint team. Okay. Everything goes back to the police uh, okay. for prosecution. All right. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you, sir. Uh, speaking with um, retired commissioner of police, Matai Hosseini. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, we continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So the pastor of Dunamis Church was trending most of the weekend, weekend Dr. Pastor Enenche. And um, the reason why he was trending was because a video was um, shown of him where a woman in his church was giving a testimony about how God had helped her to be the first graduate in her family. Uh, and she was excited to talk about how she has been able to achieve a BSc in law. And the moment she said BSc in law, Pastor immediately condemned that utterance, saying that it's a lie, it's a fake testimony. And the reason why he said that was because, according to him, there's nothing like BSc in law. Um, he was insisting that she was actually an LLM or ZLLB. Mm. And you had there, and there, there, there are ways of determining who actually has a law degree, a medical degree, a postgraduate degree, any type of degree, have their own various um, acronyms and um, how, how it is addressed. Unfortunately, she um, was then condemned online for her testimony. Fast forward to this morning and maybe even Sunday night, um, wow. reports have come out to say that indeed mm -hmm. she was a graduate Nigeria. of uh, I think it was Open University in yeah. Abuja, uh, where she did graduate, and her name was on the list. And now people are asking the pastor to apologize. Now, there are various levels of this conversation. There's a part of her diction, her English, her spoken English, that automatically would let the hearer already yeah. question if indeed this woman is lying or not lying, because the lawyer doesn't speak the way, according to the pastor, that the way she spoke. Secondly, she was unable to articulate the type of degree she got, and then she was immediately judged by the pastor that she lied. What are your thoughts on this? That's what's hot today. You can call us on 081-0764-1679-09024-163440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. Okay. Who's going to start? Mm -hmm. Okay, Julie, you want to start? <laughs> okay, let me start. So um, when I saw the video, I didn't expect the end. I was just watching to see her. Why? Testimony. Yeah, I was just, you know, feeling her as she was mm. giving her testimony. And there was no point watching that that I even sensed she was lying, right? Uh, because I grew up in the East. I grew up, I, I've traveled to almost all these states in Nigeria. And I know how uh, some people have very strong mother tongue. And no matter the school they go to, it doesn't clean off. And the university is not a place to clean up your English. If you miss it from primary school, most especially primary school, your formative years, and secondary school, 
the university is just expanding on the knowledge you have chosen. Nobody is teaching you diction and tenses in the university. So we have a lot of graduates who do not, cannot put their tenses together properly when the chip comes down, right? But they may be able to write and they have content. So I really do not um, judge people based on, there was no time in my head where I felt this person was lying because she could not speak proper English because I have seen lawyers who cannot speak proper English, but they deliver. When you, when you are in a conversation and you have a, a problem that there's a solution that's needed to come out, they deliver. But if you have to tick them off by their English, you will not give them that job. And I've worked with them as well. Now, secondly, I also expected that for you to get to that level as a man of God, you should have discernment, the spirit of discernment. Unfortunately, what we see that a lot of people do not even pay attention to those spiritual strengths that they are supposed to nurture. You should be able to tell that this person is lying or not. That's one. And if you cannot, if you do not have that spirit of discernment, you should have emotional intelligence. You should consider people, even if you have to finally investigate and chastise her, it shouldn't have been on the spot. This is a woman who, if you had listened to her story, was telling you, this is where I came from. This is all the family trauma and baggage. None of us in our whole family has ever gotten this certification. And I had to walk through how many years with sicknesses and everything. There's a way okay. you would have. No, I've never finished. No, no, I don't want you to finish the show. I get the point. You've, gotten, you've, got, you, you've, you've said two key things, which I think is really important. Mm. Okay. But in, in, in addition to what you're saying, do you think a church like Dunamis, because this man is probably uh, faced with these kinds of testimonies all the time. So do you think him immediately attacking was right or wrong? Let me come to the ladies. What are, what are your thoughts? Um, with, with all due respect to the position of being the pastor, um, with all res due respect to the anointing, you know, all this of who he is and what he represents, I strongly believe that that was a goof. And it was a goof that I believe in all sincerity he should apologize for. I believe that it is human, we are all human beings. No matter how big a man of God is, you can make mistakes. Your ability to apologize for those mistakes is what makes you a leader. I feel, oh, maybe I should not have approached it that way. Oh, maybe I have heard so many testimonies that were false mm. or many testimonies that were embellished. You can tarnish your image. Yes. Testimonies that were embellished, said on the pulpit, and they say, ah, a person went to the pulpit and shared a testimony and um, in this particular big church, and it was a lie, and everybody rejoiced. Even the pastor preached with it, and then we now found out later. So I, I believe with benefit of hindsight, it would have taken his time to investigate it before calling it out as a lie yeah. because of the appearance, because we have been taught not to judge the book. By we have been cover. by its cover. We have been taught, even in the Bible, that you don't look at somebody the way the person looks and say, this is the person, this is not the person. Label. Because we saw Samuel do it. Say, oh, this is the person I'm to annoy it. And God said, no, that's not the person. Go and go to the bush and go and bring the person from the bush. He doesn't have the strapping of being a king, but he is the person I'm, you are going to annoy to be the king. So I sensed that he, there's a reactionary move from him to call out something. Hasty. And he was hasty. He was not right, and he should apologize because he is human, and it is humbling, and it is a sense, it will, it will send a ripple effect to, all, to all, all churches and even individuals and leaders to understand that, okay, I'm human, right. I can own up my mistakes when I've made a mistake. If he verifies that that lady graduated from Open University and is a lawyer, then she should he owes her okay. apology for okay. calling her out as a liar to everybody on, as in this okay. is went viral with right. her name. All right, let me let me come to you. What are your own thoughts? On okay, this? so um, I believe, and we all know, we all live in Nigeria, and we all see the backlash that um, religious leaders they get and churches get, right? Mm -hmm. And um, people are constantly calling out um, churches on fake uh, testimonies and mm -hmm. stuff. So him um, getting up and challenging a testimony and asking before he challenged that testimony, let me let's give him the benefit benefit of doubt. He asked some questions Basic questions yes right and he, he asked the right questions and he didn't get the right answers and that made him suspect. suspect and say please step down because i'm sure he has been faced with this kind of thing mm. over and over again one right but in a situation whereby he asked those questions and he got the wrong answers that made him make that decision now that after the fact that we found out that the girl actually graduated fine an apology um, he, he should render an apology. That's on one side. 
Then on the other side, let me now, let me face the, girl, the lady. I understand that you took you as in you're the first person that, um, graduated. that graduated from your family. Super congratulations to you, you know, um, in graduating and becoming, um, and becoming a, law, a law graduate. But then I don't understand how you spent almost 10 years in school and still don't even understand the degree that you went through and suffered through to get. If I'm sitting down, in my, I conduct interviews, and if I'm sitting down in my office and I know any law firm in Nigeria would do the same or anywhere in the world, and you come in as a lawyer and you say you're a lawyer, and I ask you what degree do you come in, and you tell me you have a, a BSc in law, no. that interview has automatically yeah, ended. Super. That is the truth. Let's speak as humans, yeah, yeah. you know, the psychological the effect. Speed. Let's call it spade a spade. She also, in her own part, did not do well, right? I have he BSc asked in medicine. Her, yes, he asked her a question in order to, to ascertain if this person was lying or not lying. Because, you know, uh, uh, um, you talked about, BC talked about um, uh, assent and whatever. Yes. Well, now we're not talking about assent. Yes. Her, her use of spoken English words, her words, you know, was not... Her tenses, her, her tenses were wrong yes. and it made him suspect. Yes, so accent is one thing. Nobody is debating accent yes. because anybody, can, tenses, have anybody can have accent. Those tenses were those totally tenses wrong. Were totally those were the tenses of a lawyer. Of a lawyer or even uh, as in, uh, uh, of a lawyer. Do you yeah. understand? Because you also don't want, if you have a case, you also yeah. don't want to pick that kind of lawyer to speak and represent you in, in court. Courts. That is no, the wrong let's thing. Let's call it spade a yeah. spade. So the tenses made him suspect okay, the testimony. I, I, I get your angle. I, I, you so it's one thing to blame the pastor for condemning. Yeah, exactly. But another thing to see, the That's reason, the, the basis on which he condemned yes. was based on what he, he, he okay. received. Ask questions. So, okay. so um, the pastor was not there as an employer mm. of labor. Mm. That he was there as a reputation. As a rep no, no, you're, you're, you're in my hold church. On, hold on, hold on. And this, you are, tell you you are how, carrying yes, the anointing of my I'm church. And you're about to say something in my tell church. You how you design your reputation if mm. you're serious minded. Mm. Mm. There are very big churches where you don't just stand up and pick a microphone. They verify your testimony before, before you, you are signed off to give testimony, to stand on the altar on Sunday. That's a big church. That's what they do. So you submit your test. They advertise it. Those people who want to give testimonies, submit it. You submit your testimony. The uh, committee in charge verifies your testimony before they now choose whether you are worthy of standing. No, okay, listen. Let's, no, let's no, pause that. Whether I'm, you are worthy I'm, of standing on the altar. So you did not do that as a big church. No, don't say that. No, you didn't do you that. You if you had done don't that, make that assumption. Listen now, sweetheart, there will if be you no had done that, will... you will not need to be asking a question from your pool, uh, from where you were sitting down to somebody who's on the pulpit because your investigating uh, panel for the testimony yes. would have told you that this is actually right. And now the person who held the microphone that was, you know, talking did not even do her well. You should have just whispered it now. If no, you didn't give her the mic. No, listen, if you had you investigated, listen now, people make mistakes. I've gone for auditions where I had everything I wanted just, to say in my head. And by the time they asked me questions, I flustered. And I failed that audition. It wasn't because I wasn't brilliant, but I panicked. The way he challenged, he threw that question at her. This is a woman who, for the re most of her life, she would have been dealing with issues of self-esteem, trying to get her confidence and all of that. She now managed and went through school and came out. And that question just scattered her and she could have just it could have flipped we stay here every day we speak english and some terms yeah. we just disappear from your head yeah. and then they judge you that you are olodo because okay, that no, term that is that that so and that and that they would have investigated her testimony that many churches for a big church. do what they what you're saying mm. there's no there's nothing that, that kind of woman is likely to have come to the committee mm. and said i'm a graduate or i'm, I'm, I'm a law graduate mm -hmm. and i want, I want to, to testify, testify. simple mm -hmm. nobody's going to be asking you for 10 10 questions to mm -hmm. tell me i have, I have like 10 people that want to testify i'm not going to go in through 30 minutes of interview you just tell me what your testimony is very good you get the mic and you go on the pulpit that's usually because i have done it before mm -hmm. so i know i'm not sitting now asking you 10 minutes of questions what is your testimony mm -hmm. oh i graduated i'm the first graduate in my family no problem get the mic next can i add something later? yes if you get an opportunity to give a testimony in church that means you are not a first timer you are a member of that church you not have necessarily to listen now not necessarily no, it's not a big church then i no. just walk into your church now yes you you, yes because you, you are feeling the anointing absolutely no. i don't no. think no. no. members no. do miracles no no, no. You, you can go to you can enter any church no. people do you, you have a crusade yes that's different and in yeah. that crusade there was a testimony yes that can happen yes if i can go to a new church talk i can enter your church today and say you know what i came in that moment that moment i was feeling something and i come out to testify absolutely it can happen it can happen let me pause you for a second i want to get your points very well but i have a 
call out who's been okay. holding. Okay. Good morning. Thanks for calling. You're live. Morning, women. Good morning. Go ahead. Beautiful. Okay, fine. I want to talk about what happened. What he did is that it's very wrong. But the lady coming to give testimony, remember nobody comes to give testimony, expecting questions, expecting to be questioned. Like, like you're coming to give testimony and she's happy that she breaks the gene. That is one. Then secondly, expecting that kind of question from the man of God took her off balance. That is true. Then secondly, he played down her emotion and that could affect her, her being confident anyway. It would tarnish her image. As in, did you know how many people go to that church? 80,000 people. 80,000 people. Do you know what that is? So I think he, hold, he holds her an apology, regardless of, of whatever. She has diction. We know she has issue of pronunciation and all that. But then she, he holds her an apology because she actually went to that school. And that question took her off balance. Thank right. you. Thank you very much, David. Let me go to a short. We're going to come back and continue with this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Yeah. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to be still concluding the part on this conversation um, as regards this doctor, Pastor Dr. Enenche. I'm coming, coming come to you, um, Amaka. Mm -hmm. We're talking about something. You say there was a point you wanted to make earlier. Yes. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, so I want to respond to the, the caller, the yeah. last caller. Um, she said that uh, the, the, the person that was giving the testimony they did not expect that kind of question. People are busting my brain. Which one is that kind of question? You get to give testimony. You're not expecting that kind of question. What kind of, what kind of question? Was that a difficult question? No, you, you know what went she's saying to school. That you, usually they don't ask questions after testimony. That's, yeah. no, no, that's, that's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Now. So, what, so, you went, so she's not making, making it sound like it was a difficult or a big question, question that was asked. No, it was a basic question as regards what your degree, you signed up to, for a degree in school. You spent almost 10 years pushing that degree. You are so happy. You came after you went through everything, and God blessed you and made sure that you, you, you got that degree. And you don't know what degree it is. You forgot. Ah, you, you forgot. With your head. People can you forgot. be fright. No, fluid. I don't. Be, I don't. I don't accept that. People one. can be no. flustered. Thank you can people be, no, can be forget. flustered. Can you forget your speaking name? on a big stage. People can be flustered. Mm -hmm. People can stammer. Mm -hmm. People can lose themselves. Exactly. Lose their People talks. hero worship their pastors. Exactly. Yeah. So you are on a stage as you are giving your testimony and you are still trying to put yourself together and the pastor holds the mic and fires you a question from down. With a very strong this is voice. a pastor that you are looking up to. You can, you, everything you know can fly out of your head. Those Very things possible. can happen. And I always believe in the fact that we are not meant to pull people down. Mm, your all. job as a pastor is to lift up. Even if I catch you as a thief mm. and I want to help you, I will pull you inside the corner oh, and yeah. call you out and tell you that, see, what you've done, what you've done, because I don't want to tear you down as a person. You know I am dealing with the character the and not the no, person. Yeah. What the, the church the did, church. what the pastor did was to call out and drag what we call online dragging. A in, personality. You dragged me, a person. For those who have no idea what we're talking about, let me just so, show this clip so that we'll come to BC. No, don't, don't pull people down. Mm -hmm. let's, let's see the clip very quickly. No. Yeah. We'll so your name and what God did for you. Praise the Lord! Above only! I want to appreciate God for my life and my family. And I want to Thank God for using mommy and daddy for our sake. It all happened that uh, I was trying to school in uh, National Open University. Before I came to this Dunamis, there's a lot of things that is happening in my life and my family. From my father's side and my mother's side, nobody's a graduate. They will only end up primary or secondary school. Praise the Lord. But when God remembered me, I got a job and I was, I was working and I decided to further my education. I started the school. I want to do law, law uh, program. I started 20. Okay, so we, we, we lost that, but. Well, her English was clean to yeah. mm. 
a certain point where she just missed a few tenses. Yes, she just yes. mixed it up, a few tenses, mm. which happens to everybody, yes. except mm. you're so eloquent that, mm. you know, let me just say, maybe your childhood, you went to one of the best schools and you really paid attention that you don't have those mistakes. People make such mistakes. Now, my point is, as a man of God, like Topper rightly said, your job was not the employer. Your job was not to pull her down. If you had noticed or your Holy Spirit had told you that she was lying, you would investigate afterwards. Then you can come on the altar on the next day and say, do you know that the woman who stood here to do a testimony last time was actually lying? We investigated and we found out she was a, it was a lie. Please, we do not allow anybody to lie here in, in the name the of God and response. whatever. That would have just made it easy. Now, okay. you have embarrassed this woman. You have disgraced her. You need to give her an apology. And you need to apologize to the church. Publicly. All right. Yeah. We, have, we have to wrap up on this. But it's a very strong they, voice. They, I, think, I think the apology should go around. There are two parts of the apology. Yes. Yes, Pastor might owe her an apology, okay. certainly, for yeah. embarrassing her. Yeah. The, the, and now that we know that she's actually a graduate, yeah. certainly. She also owes her university an apology. Yes. Yes. For me, yeah. degree, degree. Degree. That she, yes. she graduated with. So yes. she also needs to apologize to, to the entire Nigerian people, Nigerian people that we educated you. Yes. And you couldn't articulate what you graduated with. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a national disgrace. Yes. Yes, it is. So both that apology should be shared across board. <laughs> okay. That's what we can take exactly. on this. <laughs> and we come back and bring in our guest, Otumba Sunday. Otumba is in the studio. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So on this segment, we have with Executive Director, Association of Nigeria Electricity Distributors, and currently the official spokesman for all the electricity distribution companies in Nigeria, uh, Otumba Sunday Odunton. He will be discussing more on the electricity matter um, with us. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you very much. On Thank Friday, you. we had the minister, Adelabo, in the yes. studio where he came, and he told us quite yes. a bit, you know, and one of the things I think I remember from that conversation is that when the discourse came, yeah, there was a lot of issues going on in the sense that they, we discovered that, that many of the discourse didn't have the technical abilities or the financial equity to even carry out what the expectations were. Mm -hmm. However, they're working with the discourse. Uh, and then right now, the issues they're having is that what is being generated is not being distributed. So there's a, the issue between generation, transmission, and distribution. So from your end, what is the update as regards distribution across the nation? What are you getting from the federal government and what are you distributing to um, the, the states across the nation? Thank you very much, Moreo. Um, number one, I think all of us need to understand that <clears throat> in the last two months, there has been very enough insufficient electricity in the country. In fact, the sector nearly collapsed. And that happened simply because of liquidity. All this issue of what you get, what don't you get, we are not generating enough, we are not transmitting enough, we are not distributing enough. But we have made progress between 2000, I was there in January 2016 on this program, I was there in 2018, 2020, and 2021. And if you remember, most of the things I said on this program that time, you can go and play it back, most of it were confirmed by the Honorable Minister himself last Saturday. Uh, last Friday, I told you on this program, I said, privatization is a journey. Mm -hmm. It's a very long journey. And that journey is in phases. The initial part of the journey, there will be challenges. There's no way you have a baby without pain. And I also said that the issue of success of the power sector in any country, liquidity is number one. You have to be able to have the right investment and when you invest in anything, the issue of cost recovery is very paramount. No businessman will invest in any country or anywhere, in any sector, if he's not sure that he can recover his cost. And I think we must commend the regulator. They are doing a very difficult job, very difficult job. They have to maintain the balance between the interest of the consumers and, of course, the interest of 
the businessmen who have to recover their costs. Mm. For the first time, we have a government that is taking a very bold decision. Most of our past ministers of power, like Mr. Fashola, they were very keen to achieve. They, they emphasized the need for appropriate pricing of the product. But the political leaders needed to take that bold decision. What has happened now? It's very simple. Band A. If you are in band A, we are saying there's no point subsidizing Morayo or a millionaire who lives in Ikeja Jiari or Asukuru or anybody who can afford the cost, don't subsidize him or her. Take out the subsidy <laughs> and let them pay for it. They can afford it. How do you know our pocket? That oh, I know your pocket. You can't afford it. Managing well, right, director, yes, yes. Yeah. No, my my director, my <laughs> director, chief executive officer, oh, yes, officer, officer. You can afford it. That's a fact. Mm. So for those who can afford it, let them pay for the I'm product. I'm seeing the truth in For those who cannot afford it, let the government continue to subsidize. As I now, government is still subsidizing as much as 67 percent. If you are not on Bande and you are watching us. Please don't join them in making the noise or complaining. You have no reason to complain. The mm -hmm. government is still paying for you. I'm paying for you to also be elevated <laughs> from band B, C, D to band A. What it means is that I pray that you should have electricity in your homes. Nigeria cannot develop without electricity. We cannot have a country okay, have without you, electricity. But if I do this is very important. I am pay no band. The service. I don't have a band. Then that means you are using free electricity. Mm -hmm. Of course not. I pay. And I pay uh, more than you, most people. No, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't know the band. You don't know it depends on you don't. No, have no, no. Hold on now. I don't have. Today. I have light just a few hours a day. I, I yes. I oh, the just same about thing. two hours or three hours a day. I the same and my thing. bill, I don't want to mention right. it here. I am paying seriously, mm. and I'm asking the question. Some people said it could be as a result of the new meters that actually run faster than the old meters because I wasn't paying as much when I was in Alabado than where I am now, that I'm paying so much. And I'm not in any band, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So please, is there anything like a new meter that makes it uh, uh, possible for you people to overcharge us, and yet we're not in band A? Does the new no. meter run faster than? No, the new meter yeah. don't run faster than usual. OK. Mm. Meter is an instrument of measurement mm. that is just there for revenue assurance. These calls are not the one manufacturing, supplying, or installing meters. meters okay. But even those who are doing it, this is a very heavily regulated industry. And I'm saying that we should give kudos to the regulators and to the federal government. Okay. What they are trying to do, what we should be talking about now is that every single household in Nigeria should be metered. Mm. Okay. And if you are metered, you can measure your consumption. And the issue of meter running fast is a no-no. What you need to do in your house, I had somebody, I read somewhere where some people somebody are saying that the minister should apologize for telling people to switch up their air conditioner or their freezer. And he has apologized. Yes, we said that. I want to repeat the same thing. Switch off, and I will not apologize. <laughs> I'm not a politician. Switch off your deep freezer when it's fully frozen. Why? Because when you switch off on, on, on Friday mind? night mm -hmm. and you put it back on on Saturday morning, mm -hmm. it is still frozen. Nobody. Open it at 3 a.m. If I don't have light in the next three, it's four about, days. No, I'm talking about Bande. Uh, yeah. I know day this Bande. Hey, let's not talk about Bande for. Okay, wait, let's let, 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 let move you to Bande. Yeah. Or move to where there's Bande. For Bande, no, 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 they are not getting the electricity. electricity. So please, how do they know they are in Bande? Please complain, complain. Let us know. But let me tell you, when we stay Bande, have between. 20 to 24, 24 hours. hours. Mm -hmm. We are not okay. saying that every day you have 20 hours don't stop. Right. Okay. We are saying that calculate your energy, the energy received in your home mm. over a period of 30 days, mm. it will never, ever be less than 20 to 24 hours. Over 30 so days. Went there, so it means some days you I'm might not have it. You, An example. It is, it is just the fact. Okay. We are not there yet, though. Mm. If anybody tell you that the journey has been completed, mm. I will tell you that we're just on the second mm. phase of the journey. What we have done now, or what the regulator and the federal government have done now, and I think the president has been bold enough to say, unplug those of us, including himself, Atikoi, who are on Bande. Let the government not subsidize for, let us pay the true cost of electricity. That's the reason for the big jump. It was a big jump. That's why people notice, ah, it's fast, though. It has to be fast. If you are paying 66 naira and suddenly you have to pay 225 naira, then that's a jump. But one thing I want to quickly inform yes. us, and that is very important, is that today, 
in West Africa, even with the Bandai, the Bandai people today mm. are paying the lowest tariff in West Africa. Uh -huh. I have the okay. facts. In fact, I asked the producer if you can, you can see it on the screen. Mm. If you look at this screen very well, we are paying the shipper. Look at Nigeria, 0 0.017 cents per kilo hour. Look at where we are. <laughs> Togo and uh, Mali are paying the highest, 0 0.215. Look at Ghana. Senegal is 0 0.18. <clears throat> and Ghana is 0 0.125. Look at 125. Nigeria is 0. Point, it's 0 0.017. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we are so low here because we have not been able to invest heavily to pay the right and appropriate tariff for electricity. So can you, like, let me pause you for a second. That thing yes. you just said. Because the, the minister to says on Friday, mm. they're trying to get liquidity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This money that you're getting from Band A, what is it going to be used for? Mm -hmm. To pay for what Band A people are consuming. Only. Ah, that's only. the answer. Who will not pay for that? That's 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 the minister that's mentioned it that like there won't be. No, the minister mentioned that we, this is not covering the previous debt. This is just ensuring that we don't accumulate debt on this yeah, particular yeah, set of yeah, people. Shortfall yeah, that so we had in the past. Okay, let me let Amaka jump in. Okay. Okay. From shortfall. okay, so uh, we, we, we understand that you said that we are not there yet and that this is going to take different phases and we're just in phase two. Please, what are we supposed to expect? How I many phases is up to phase 10? How long? What's the mm -hmm. projection? Let's know what to expect. Mm -hmm. If Nigeria stops stealing energy, and we are very, very good at stealing in Nigeria, hey. if, we are, if we stop stealing energy, we can end the journey by phase three or four. If we continue, it can be phase 10. So when we say phases, what we're saying is that as of today, mm -hmm. if you're on Bande, you are no more being subsidized by anybody. Mm -hmm. You should even be proud of yourself. You pay your cost. And you will get the service, because you have the right to get the service. You go to Bini uh, Disco today, they have what they call rapid response team. Once you don't get the required number of hours, mm -hmm. it could be your local uh, transformer. It could be a simple local glitch or yeah. issue. They will respond because you are paying for the service. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are doing in all of that discourse. So for the other bands, what we should do is to also try to invest more in the system so that they can also be upgraded to band -A. The whole country should be on band -A at some point. Band -A to E. When I'm in Abel Guta, I'm on band -A. I get very, very poor service. But in the same Abel Guta, Ogute capital. I know five places <coughs> where they get nothing less than 20 hours. I'm praying to God to be able to go and leave. leave. <laughs> but what, so, what, so, sorry, what would make somebody in Band E right now? Who wants 20, 20 hours? They also deserve 20, 20 hours. And they are willing to pay. pay. And they are willing to pay. pay. How, what happens? Somebody who is on Band what? Band E. e. Or band and wants 20 oh, hours of electricity. What should they do? Fantastic. I can advise. Mm. And I will use the Magodo example in Lagos State. Mm. Before this new tariff. People in Magodo, some good mm. citizens, came together and said, Ikaja, we don't want to be using generator again. Mm. We are tired of the cost of diesel and petrol. Can you give us something more? We call it winning buyer, winning seller. Okay. Mm. And we made it happen. Mm. Magodo, they stopped using their diesel and, and it, should there be any problem, they even informed them in advance. So if any community who are now in Ban E, which is less than four hours, mm. if they want to go to 20 hours, get yourself together, we can electronically reinvent that community or that area as long as you are willing to and pay. ready to pay. Just because one person is a rich man there does, does not, not guarantee mean. payment. Ah. The issue in the Nigerian power sector is the issue of payment. People think electricity is a social service. A politician will tell you it's a social service. I, as a businessman, will tell you that electricity is a product, like bread, like any other product. Somebody had to spend money to produce it. Mm. That cost element had to be recovered. Mm -hmm. And in the case of electricity, I want our people to please, I know the country is hard. I know how people feel. It's an emotional topic. But please, try to understand the fact that more than 80% of what we use in the Nigerian power sector are imported. That's the issue of foreign exchange. As soon as now, dollar is coming down. Mm -hmm. Naira is gaining strength. Mm. Now, Would the tariff reduce? If that is, if that Sustain. is sustainable, as time goes on, Tariff will come down. Mm. We're going but to be sustainable. So this thing you said. Oh, yeah. let me repeat it. Yes, I said this here in 2016. Oh, yes. I was there. Mm. And I said, if the tariff goes up mm. and people are paying mm. and there's a reduction in theft and people report, see something and say something, in, sometimes in the future it goes up, it will start coming down. And I gave an example of other countries, Kenya and other places where that happened. But if we continue in our usual Nigerian 
go and steal. Don't worry, nothing will happen. We won't get there. Mm -hmm. Okay, talk about. So um, I hear you, and it's always. It's, it will make it look like, oh, there's nothing we can see when, we, when you come with this approach of it's a business, a business needs to make money, let's not bring in any sentiment. But I read in the papers today about Manufacturers Association of Nigeria complaining about the impact of energy on their business. YK as would always come here and shout and say, I'm not seen, I am, they group <coughs> me as band A, that's YK in Ikeja, um, business issue. They group them as band A, but they are still running generator. They're not seeing 20-hour exactly. supply. So people within that area, industrial, band A, not seeing 20-hour supply, what yes. should they do? How can they How do you respond to their issues right now? How do you respond to them? Okay. With this new system, what we are trying to do now, all eyes are on the discourse, mm. on the generation companies and transmission companies. And we're all working together. It's not about we and them again. Mm. The regulators are working, and they are so responsible. They try to do as much as possible to ensure that they deliver on their mandate. If we do not serve you correctly, one, your area will have to be downgraded back to the next level, maybe band B. And if we charge you unnecessarily, if you are asked to pay money for Band A, when you are getting the service of Band B, mm. you get a refund, but when end there, we will be penalized by a regulator. That happened to us less than two weeks ago. So it is not business as usual anymore. I can assure you that there is enforcement, and they will make sure that. And technology has made some things very easy. So if you tell me that you don't get Band A service, I can see it go into the system and check. I can sure. tell you how much energy went to your house through your transformer and the feeder that served that transformer. Mm -hmm. It is very easy to know. Uh, like we said at the beginning, there are only 481 feeders that are affected in the whole country. The house is Abuja, which is 107 feeders. Ikeja here, where we are, is only 45 feeders. Mm -hmm. And when people are complaining, this thing affects the rich more than the poor. It is the affluent, the, the, the privileged people. The ladies, your view, they ladies, they are privileged people in this country. Wow. It is people like you that are affected by this change. Let me ask. Yeah. Yeah. The Manufacturers no. Association let me ask. Oh, Manufacturers yeah. Association of Nigeria. Mm. You see, OK, um, these are Patochi Nigerians Building who, business. instead of engaging in round tripping, choose to manufacture mm. to, engage that the, to ensure that the country grow and yeah. have an industrial yeah. nation. Mm -hmm. But we have been having issues with them as far back as 2016 regarding tariff, the MITO 2, MITO 1, all those things. But we're nearing a, a resolution now. It is in our interest for our industrialists to get good service. The more service they take from us, the more money they pay. And they pay very well. So I assure you, we will continue to engage with them. Uh, man, Manufacturing State of Nigeria, we will ensure that they get the service that they require. Because when they get the service, they won't complain, they will pay. Yeah. If we pay. don't give them the service, they will complain. Right, I have a question so here for you have to. For, from, from online. Somebody says, coming together to choose Bande is not as easy as he's saying. There are issues of feeders, transformers that must have, that must have the capability to carry the 20, 24 hours, like you're saying. Correct. So there's a process to getting people upgraded. It's not a plug and play. So now takes me to the question of what the minister said last week. It is your job as Disco to provide transformers for us. Hmm. But many people don't have transformers today. Hmm. That's what is correct. delaying the infrastructural Thank development of Thank these? Thank you. And I'm sure, I hope the minister is watching. It is truly, it is our job mm. to provide transformers, cables, and all the right. When we were having a tariff structure, whereby we were asked to undersell the product, something, for instance, that should cost 112, we had to be selling it for 60 naira. There's no way we can provide this transformer for anybody. Mm. Because already, as we are selling to you, we are losing. We are losing. And part of what we are selling, we could not recover our money, but people are stealing it anyway. Now, in the case of transformer, if your transformer is faulty anywhere in the country and you call us, I will tell you on national TV, the first thing we do, we go and check our computer. We check that transformer. If there are basic debts on that transformer, we ask you as a community, okay. come and clear your debt. We shall repair your transformer. You can get this only just gave a brand new transformer to a place in Ogba in the last three weeks that I was involved in. Once we see a paying community or street or area, we'll do what we need to do. The reason why we failed, and I admit we have, 
The reason why we failed to serve you well in the past is liquidity crisis. Because I'm selling to you a product that I was not allowed to charge the normal price, and government that promised to pay subsidy will not pay. Mm. And I'm happy the minister confirmed that. When they say subsidy, subsidy, they don't pay, oh, they don't pay. So that's why we have the shop. Okay, so let me hold you on this when you talk yes. about liquidity again. Everybody yes. is talking about liquidity. So what has the discos, what have they done now? What process are they putting in place in terms of pulling investors, in terms of facilitate businesses now for money to actually come in? Mm -hmm. Are we you. going to continue uh, 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 as, as a business as usual or what are they doing in terms of pulling in investors? Exactly. Okay, number one, the Electricity Act 2023 has amended. It's going to help the country a lot. Mm. It has created room for more competition. Mm -hmm. That's number one. <coughs> number two, the country as a whole, the government is the one that you should be talking to. The government should provide the atmosphere. When people see that Nigeria is ready for business, and I believe we are ready now, investors will naturally come. If somebody knows that if I invest in Bande, I will recover fully, they will come. If somebody knows that if I go to Band E, when I invest there, I cannot recover. And when the, the, the subsidy that they promised, they will not pay. They will be very scared to put their money there. So investment is all about the country as a whole, how we are, who we are, right from the airport, the ease of doing business. Visa on arrival, all those reforms that are going on will help the country. Remember, there are people who are willing to come into this country and invest. The power sector can be very profitable, but it can be very dangerous. And I remember uh, one of our, our regulators asked the question, asked somebody, if you have money, can you invest in the Nigerian power sector? If you have me that question today, I would rather take my money to Abeokuta and be eating my yogi. Because, because, that sector is very, very, very volatile. Mm. But now we are moving there. Band A is in now. Mm -hmm. We now need to begin to address what we can do to improve the service for Band B, C, D, and E. But I'm calling on Nigerians, please, as we improve your service, you should be paying for the service. What are those I want to call on the government, okay. please, it's time to roll out meters. I know it's expensive, yeah, and I know they are working on it. Yeah. Without meter, people cannot measure their consumption. And those who don't have meter waste energy a lot. Yeah. And those who are on Bande, I'm going to an example. They know how to manage energy. <laughs> I open my windows now. I have no band. Oh, so, 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 where so, so, don't so, even so put on the light upstairs yeah. anymore. Yeah. The light is that. always off. So yeah. manage your energy. Once you manage it, you won't feel that 225 that we're all talking yeah. about. So you know you talked energy about, management. You talked about uh, people who are stealing uh, oh, so electricity. Much. And I wanted to ask you who is responsible for catching them as a business uh, okay. so that we end, we don't end up putting everything on government. If you are a business, you're running a business and somebody's coming to See steal me, catch your, exactly, your, your, your materials, mm. who is supposed to handle that and ensure yeah. it okay. doesn't happen? Primarily from the beginning, we're the one that is supposed to catch the thieves. Mm. Mm. But catch we can them. catch the thieves only if we get the proper intelligence from our customers who live around the thieves. Okay. All of us on this table <laughs> live near thieves. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I can confirm that. As I, can confirm. I can come back to you before the end of today to show you, BC, that you where you live, around me. there are thieves on your street. Wow. So you may not know Electricity. because you are not a thief. You can tell. No, you are not. You can tell from, from your meter. Because when we look at our feeder, the feeder supply electricity to various uh, transformers. Okay. That transformer, in most cases, are metered. Okay. So I know the energy received by the transformer, okay. which is pushed into the homes. Okay. When we do the calculation of payment at the end of the month, you see a lot of gap. Ah. That's how we know that from this transformer. So go and catch them now. Oh. But, oh. them now. You see, so when we now catch them, as we have done many times in the past, mm. we do not have prosecution power. Mm. We hand them over to oh. the, police the police and the civil defense. Oh. I'm not here to demand and negotiate. And well, I know I can tell you it. for free. But can you name and shame them? Put them oh, on the papers. We do, we do that, yeah. and we'll continue to do that. I think we need to do more of that. Yes. Yeah. But the, 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 and my friends, I spoke with a high court judge yesterday who complained to me. If you are watching us, I've told you the next time they bring a case of energy theft to your court, send that guy to jail without an option of fine. Mm. If you do your own part, Mr. George, mm. Nigeria will be we'll a better stop. place. Mm. What we are doing in Nigeria is that we push, we pass the buck. Let everybody play their own part. Mr. Judiciary, do your own. Mm. Mr. Police, do your own. Mr. Disco, do your own. If your Disco staff, if you see thieves among them, 
don't just dismiss them as we do. Okay, because of dismiss time. and prosecute. Because of time, let me be sure that I've understood you've communicated something to me. Yes. So if I am living right now somewhere far in Ajangbaji, yes. and I'm on band C, yes. and I have only four hours or five hours of power, yes. and I want to also have 20 hours of power, Yes. What I need to do is gather my community. Either it's an estate or the street. Yes. Or, okay, all of us, we're under this transformer. Let us come together and have a meeting. Mm -hmm. Let us see what can we do. Are we willing to pay and go to this band so we can get 20 Great. hours? Mm -hmm. Once we organize ourselves, we now come to you, this school. We have organized ourselves, so we are 20 of yes. us, so, and we want to do this. Can you put us on band A? Now, you do that for us. Now, when you say you are 20, can we put you on band A? Mm -hmm. This is not a subject of where exactly you are. Mm -hmm. The distance, mm -hmm. how to get that power to you. Mm. It's, a, it's, it's a factor, okay. and it is easy to say we are ready. Mm. Readiness has to be practical. Mm. Then the issue of Mitad. us, everybody has to be metered. Mm. Now everybody. the issue of us giving you band A, yes. it is in our interest for everybody in Nigeria to be on band A. Mm. But the infrastructure is very, very dilapidated. So it's not my fault. A lot of, no, it's not my fault. So it's not my fault. Now, so I, mean, I want. Now I guess the cocoa I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that, that mm. collectively. If, we are, if you are on band D mm. and your bill is 5,000, yes. stop paying 2,000. Mm. Pay the 5,000. Okay. Make sure you don't ask your electri electrician to bypass, to bypass your meter. Mm. Yeah, but, Once wait, you don't I, do I, that, I have a I have to run over. Go ahead, you'll be getting yeah. appropriate payment from your yeah, side. Because we'll someone, your we're talking about the same thing. Because someone said that they bought a 100 kVA transformer since 2020, but they were connected to a feeder with low light. Now, to connect them on, like, Wolario feeder, they're asking them to pay a bill of 22 million. That, so, is it that they pay for, if, so, is, who has the, so, is it this code now? Is it that responsible for, like, connecting someone to a low feeder if they've paid for a transformer, or if they now want to move them to the right uh, uh, feeder? Right. They're not telling them to pay 22 million. What do you have to say about well, like that? I don't know about anyone being asked to pay 22 million. Mm -hmm. We have to get the fact before we come to a conclusion. Okay. Is it 22 million for certain infrastructure that is required mm. to be connected to that particular kind of line. For instance, mm. if there is a 33 kV line mm. somewhere mm. and you're on 11 kV, that transformer, whether you bought it for 12 million or 20 million, mm. cannot be used on 33 kV line. That means there's a need to change and mm. purchase some. That's not our own responsibility. But that's, that's, that's I'm not saying it's your responsibility. Hey. But I would do that at Disco mm. if only that particular mm. community of Moria is profitable. If they are not paying your community, well, I will not. I think that's so tough for our now. A, we have to I'm an Ebba man, no. So there's a, there's a, there's a thin lie. line between that social service and business. And, and we need to find pay, it. We need to have find the thin line. Pay, yeah. you get the service. We need to get that balance pay, between that social you service. Where you are. Because it's a you social service. You. It's not a social. It's not a social service. service. We, we, it's, a, it's, it's a product. No, it's a product. But it's also call it social like, service. Anyway, it's a social service because without power, I cannot I cannot contribute my quota to the economy. And without paying for power, you cannot. Get power to yeah. contribute your quota to the economy. It's, it's, it's a, it's a that product. is what we can take, sir. <laughs> Thank you. It was a pleasure having you. I think you covered quite a bit of base. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.